Okay, in this video we are going to meet the logical fallacies. We're going to first talk about what the logical fallacies are exactly, and then we're going to meet them in terms of examples. So first off, logical fallacies. There is actually formal logic here that deals with logical fallacies. And in formal logic, names, Latin names, scary sounding Latin names are given to different types of logical fallacies. The great news for us here as revised GRE students on the AWA, we do not need to know that whatsoever. We simply need to note that the argument is not valid for a certain reason. However, we just decide to phrase that is the key because the GRE is not testing our ability to know Latin words for logical fallacies, but really they're testing the way we think. They want to know, can we identify the holes in this argument? So that said, here, when I go and give my examples, of logical fallacies, I've just given them my own names. So we could put them in categories so we know what to look for. So first off, we have the things change fallacy. Again, it doesn't sound very formal at all, and that of course is not the point. So what is the things change fallacy? So here's an example. It says in 85, Hampson, a leading player in the aftershave market, launched a successful ad campaign. Therefore, Hampson, if he wants to repeat the success, should launch the same ad campaign. Well, hold on, things change. What worked in 1985 isn't necessarily gonna to work today. Why? Well, maybe the people, their customer base has changed. So if an ad campaign targeted older men and had maybe images of yachts or whatever it is old men like, it wouldn't work if now Hampson targets a younger demographic. So there could be all these reasons why this argument doesn't hold true, but as soon as you see this, you go, okay, well, that's it, things change. So to base my attack of the argument on that and then of course you want to come up with reasons why things change how did things change and of course i gave you an example just now the demographics so that's what we're going to do here on most of these examples i'm going to basically tell you the name of it how it pertains to this argument and then or how it pertains to this example and then of course how we could come up with alternate explanations to improve the argument okay let's try it with number two assume cause and effect what's the assumed cause and effect let's have a look after instituting a comprehensive bilingual education program, Monty High witnessed the greatest percent of its senior class go on to college. Therefore, Monty High should continue the bilingual education program. Well, wait a second. Just because they brought in this bilingual education program, program doesn't mean suddenly that, oh, that's why people were accepted to colleges, as though colleges were basing their admissions solely on whether or not these students here are taking the bilingual program. Now, the key here, though, again, is improving the argument. What else? could account for this. Well, a host of other factors, maybe new teaching staff, maybe there was some other form of curriculum, maybe they had essay coaches on hand, maybe they had a superstar SAT teacher, all of these reasons could work or account for the reason for the fact that more Monty High seniors than ever before went on to attend college. So we can't just assume it was this bilingual education program. Okay, so those are two. Now we have a few more to go. So let's take a look at the next one. Numbers and percentage assumptions. Well, what's going on here? Let's see, more students. Here we go, Monty High again. More students from this year's senior class at Monty High went on to college. Therefore, this year's seniors are Monty High's most successful. So you have more, you have a number here. What does this number mean? Well, imagine this. Imagine, let's just make it the 1000, 2010 class here at Monty High. This 2010 class, you had 100 students and 99 went on to attend college. That's amazing. Wow. And then this year, 2011, the year we're talking about here, we had 200 students in the class. Or they combined maybe with another school. And out of the 200, 100 went on to college, which is more than 99. But wait a second, is that necessarily better? So percentage-wise, 99% went on to attend college, and only 50% did. So you have to be able to account for these number errors, and sometimes I call these math errors, or math assumptions. So you can think of it in terms, or in math terms. Okay, now for the next one, we have vague language. What do we have here? Studies have shown that those who eat three maximum meal fruit bars a day are in better shape than those who eat a normal diet. Okay, wait a second. What do we mean in better shape? How do you quantify that? How do you come up with this? So this is very vague. Then those who eat a normal diet. Is there anything wrong with that? What do we mean by a normal diet? 
Again, this is very vague. So we need to be able to pick up on those terms and say, what does it mean to be in better shape? And then delve into that, show how that can be a whole the argument because they may say, oh, better shape means that they run more. Well, how is that better shape? So of course, try to take apart the argument based on these things. Don't just say, oh, the language is vague, end of story. No, the language is vague. What must the argument do to make this language less vague? Well, give us something specific here, quantify better shape. Okay, well, they lost 10 pounds versus those on a normal diet. A normal diet being what? Again, define terms. Make sure this has to be specific as possible in order for the argument to be more valid. Okay, we have a few more to go, as I said. And next one, we have not all X are alike. So X being a certain group. So a recent study found that 50 to 65 year olds in Gambitville responded favorably to a new anti-cholesterol drug. Therefore, 50 to 65 year old males in Smugsburg will also respond favorably to their drug. Okay, so it is assuming what? That the 50 to 65 year olds in Gambitville are the same as the 50 to 65 year olds in Smugsburg. Now, obviously there's gonna be significant overlap. They're both males, same group. However, there can also be subtle differences. So, what could be some subtle differences? Or maybe they're not even that subtle. Maybe Gambitville is in a part of the country where they, they're fond of very rich, heavy foods. And Smugsburg is maybe more similar to where I live in California, where people are very much into eating healthy and fitness. We don't know, but you can't compare one group to another group in a different country. They're not alike, or a different city in this case. They're not alike in all cases. And so, of course, you want to come up with some alternate alternative explanations. Okay, so next one is don't trust a survey. And this one's pretty typical. You can kind of see this one coming from a mile away. So it usually says according to some sort of survey. So according to the latest survey, the residents of Monroe Town are unlikely to commute to neighboring Jacksonburg unless a new highway is constructed. Therefore, the highway should be constructed. Well, okay, so it's assuming that just because the survey said something that we can really trust the results. So did it pull all of the residents from the town? Maybe just specific ones. And even if it pulled all the residents, just because these residents say something that, oh yeah, we're gonna start commuting if this highway is constructed, doesn't mean they're actually going to start commuting once the highway is constructed. So again, that's what you wanna look for. And then finally, here we have here, apples aren't oranges. And I call this the different cities. And you'll see why in a minute. But the idea that two things, you assume two things are alike, but they're not because apples aren't oranges. And what do we have here? We have, since building a subway system, Gap Town has been able to cut down on its citizens' average commute. Therefore, Percyville should also build a subway if it wants to reduce the average commute for its citizens. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, we're assuming that what works for Gap Town the subway system right here is going to work for Percyville. So therefore, because it worked in Gap Town, it should work in Percyville, this subway system. But wait a second. How do we know that's the case? Maybe Percyville and Gap Town are very different. So very different. Or not alike. They do not equal one another. But of course, you can't just stop there. You have to say why. Maybe Percyville most have to commute long distances. Maybe there is no central downtown and therefore building a subway system isn't going to do much good. So you can maybe go into to depth about traffic patterns, any other possible explanations. That, that's what you're going for here. Once you identify in your own words, please don't you know put out, this is an apples to orange fallacy. You want to simply say the argument assumes that Gap Town is the same as Percyville. However, these two cities can differ for many reasons. First off, Percyville could be dot, dot, dot. That is how you want to attack these logical fallacies.